Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy back with another video. and This one's going to be on Osmo Regulation. Now, Osmo Regulation is something that all animals are fighting against. We're trying to maintain a balance of water. Too much water and our cells burst. Too little, much, too little water, our cells shrivel up and die. So, um, when we talk about Osmo Regulation, we have to talk about Osmo Molarity, uh, which is basically the os osmotic pressure or total solute concentration. For example, seawater has a thousand milli os osmoles per liter. Human blood has 300 milli osmoles per liter. So you would think seawater has more salts and nutrients in it than blood does. So that's why it has a higher osmolarity. Now, there are two main ways uh, of maintaining a water balance. You can be an osmoconformer. That probably means you live in the water. Or you can be an osmoregulator. Now, an osmoconformer are like your marine animals that live in the salt water. And they try to keep an isotonic environment, which means they try to keep a balance inside of them and outside. So if there's more salt out than in, they try to bring salt in to keep it balanced and water out and in to keep those osmolarity equal. Osmoregulators are terrestrial animals and freshwater animals. Osmoregulators, they have to regulate their osmolarity independent of their environment. Okay. Now, think about marine animals. They, they're what we call hyperosmotic, which means they there's more salt outside than in. So salt comes in, that means water leaves. So marine animals, have, are, they dehydrate very quickly. Freshwater fish, for example, gain water because there's more nutrients and stuff inside their, inside their cells than out. So that goes out and water comes in, causes them to swell. So there's a little bit different in how they both uh, regulate it. Uh, if you look down here in the diagram, the osmotic regulation of a salt water in fish, you know, it's up here. It's got that it, it gains water and salts from food and through drinking seawater that go in, and it loses osmotic water loss through the gills and other parts of its body. So it's going to get rid of water to help maintain that balance. And where does it get rid of the salts and other things? It's going to excrete some of those in its waste. Now, the freshwater fish are a little bit different. They're going to have uptake of some ions and water into the mouth a little bit, but most osmotic water goes through their gills. So they have a, a great gain in water and stuff through their gills and surface area because water wants to rush in. They also have an uptake of salt ions through their gills. Now, of course, they're going to be the same way. They're going to excrete large amounts of water and nutrients uh, through their kidneys, through their bladder. So, so there's a slight difference of how it works. Fresh water is going to actually go out through their gills. I mean, salt water is going to go out through the gills. Fresh water is going to come in through their gills. All right. Um, now, land animals are a little bit different. We have to be very careful about dehydration. Humans, if we dehydrate and lose 12% of our body water, we die. Camels, the reason we, you know, they're desert animals is because they can withstand almost twice that much or 24% of their body water before it becomes dangerous to them. Now, how do we prevent this? We prevent this by our body coverings, our skins. Our different types of skins help land animals to prevent this drying out. We also have animals that are nocturnal, uh, especially in the desert, right, that only come out at nighttime, which prevents their water loss. And then we help maintain this water level that we need inside our body, this osmoregularity, by what we drink. Now, if we look at the nitrogenous waste, the waste products of different animals, it actually reflects their phylogeny. If you remember what phylogeny is, that's their evolutionary history, and also the habitat in which they live. For example, if an animal excretes ammonia, which is very toxic, they probably need water to do this, and it probably goes through a gill. So we're talking about some type of fish. If you excrete just plain urea, you're probably a mammal such as us, but it has a little bit higher expense because we have to add carbon dioxide to it, We have to make it, which makes it safer, but the disadvantage is it requires some energy on our part. And some use uric acid, such as like reptiles, and which include birds, uh, insects, and some land snails. Um, uric acid is even a higher cost, but a lot of times we use these animals excrement as fertilizer because it does have so much energy placed into it so it makes good fertilizer there's actually a picture in your book of um, them harvesting uh, this guano, guano 
from an island where birds are, are, are on. But anyway, I hope this helps you a little bit to understand osmoregulation, and I will talk to you very, very soon.